I'm doubling your salaries for the length of time you stay at the clamp at home. But if one word of this gets back to my wife in Boston, you're both out of work with no references. Actually, you will find the clampets to be basically fine people. All they need is a little polish. Polish? They need sandblasting. <laughs> However, I think Miss Hathaway's plan may overcome their initial resentment of wearing city clothes. Yes, I, I think I have devised rather a clever strategy. To put it briefly and succinctly, my strategy is as follows. I shall propose to the Clampets that they sit for a family portrait. As you know, my hobby is painting. <laughs> now, I should suggest to the Clampets that their attire match their background, which is, of course, their beautiful mansion. They will no doubt see the logic of my didactic approach, accede to my wishes, don suitable raiment, and once they have seen themselves thus attired, take... We're in. Let's go. <laughs> We forgot to dust the stair rail. I'll do it, Granny. Say, <laughs> right. wearing boys' clothes does come in handy sometimes. Hi, Ginger Granny. I think we got our old spick and span for the company. They ain't a speck of dirt, no place. Can I go swimming now? Me too. As soon as we help Granny clean up the kitchen. Was that music again? <laughs> you ever find out where that comes from? No, I'm Granny. Every single time I commence to looking for it, somebody comes to the door. <laughs> Nobody to the door now? There will be. You'll see. <laughs> mm, doggies, that's nice. <laughs> How long pitch in see can we find it? You're wasting your time. I'm a telling you. Before you can find it, somebody will come to the door. <laughs> there, you see? Happens every time. I remember, Ravenswood. I'm counting on you. Don't fail me. You have my word, sir. I've been butler and barrett since boyhood. As was my father before me and his father before him. And I've yet to meet the man or woman who posed a social problem too difficult for me to handle. That's the spirit. Howdy there. Remember me, Mr. Butler? No! <laughs> Ravenswood probably forgot something. He'll return shortly. Meanwhile, this is Marie, Mrs. Drysdale's upstairs girl. Marie, Mr. J.D. Clappett. Howdy. Jethro Bodine. Ellie Mae Clappett. And Grandma Clappett. No, ma'am. I am a Moses. Pardon? Granny's related on my wife's side. He's the Moses family from Tennessee. Then your name is Granny Moses? Grandma Moses. That's right. There was a very famous Grandma Moses who painted primitives. I've whitewashed a few myself. <laughs> I'll show Marie to her room. Listen, Marie, honey. Over here, you've got the run of the house. You don't have to hide upstairs. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that girl, but want some good cooking will cure her. She's half starved. Poor thing is so weak, her knees keeps a buckling on her. <laughs> She's kind of pretty, though, for a skinny girl. Just wait till she gets some mess of Granny's grits and hog gel. That'll fill her out. Till I'll get some of cooking. Guess that butler fellow will be coming back directly. Oh, and Granny, can we have some of that salted down possum belly that Ma sent us? Well, I reckon it is kind of a company meal. <laughs> Granny? Open up a jar of them pickled crow gizzards. Now, Jeff, we don't want to sport police folks. They might get to thinking we eat like that every day. Hey, me, will you do something nice for me? I sure, Paul. Will you go get into that pretty dress again? Oh, Paul, Jeff will make fun of me. No, I won't, Ellen May. Cross my heart. Why, uh... That's my darling. Thank you. And then... You be real nice to Marie. She's had a bad life. I'll be nice to her. She's pretty. Let's all be nice. <laughs> I wanted to go swimming. Now I gotta go put on an old dress. Cousin Allie, 
You look awful pretty in a dress. Honest, you do. Do I look pretty in that there city girl? You look prettier in that there city girl. That did it? Come on and fight. Now, Ellie, come on, Ellie. Come on, Ellie. <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of, Raymond. The fact that they're big and strong doesn't mean they're violent. Elephants can be gentle. <laughs> Now, I believe this one. Your wedding appearances deceive you. Oh, really? Oh, I uh, do admit on the surface they do seem a bit rough, even cruel. But I assure you, underneath, they are placid, kindly, and gentle. You see. You shouldn't have called me a snake, sir. Oh, man, leave me alone, please. Oh, man, Mr. Butler? Don't never say anything nice to that girl. She'll kill you. Come back! You promise! I found her granny granny when Mr. Drysdale said he didn't have no use for Mr. Butler. He sure wasn't fooling. I just seen him cut through the brush chasing him with a stick. If Mr. Butler gets sassy with me, I'll chase him with more than a stick. Jan, Ellie throwed me down in my head again. If she don't stop that, I'm going to get a headache. Stop her, Jethro. But golly, all I said was she's pretty. That ain't no call to bust a fella's head. How's it doing? Oh, howdy, Marie. Hi, Marie. Are you hungry, darling? No, madam. I'm whopping up something here to just set your mouth to watering. Put some strength in your limbs, too. <laughs> Tell them what it is, Randy. A great big mess of grits and hog down. And salted down possum belly. Gold pickled crow gizzards. How do you like that? Don't tell me that child ain't hungry. Why, she's ready to drop in her tracks. <laughs> Set her at the table and I'll dish up a mess. No, please. I only came in to bring you a message from Miss Hathaway. She's preparing to paint the family portrait. And she wishes to know if you all will sit for her. May I tell her that you will sit for her? Well, yeah, I reckon we'll do that. Merci. Well, let's get at it.